Howdy friends, thanks for making time for our monthly livestock report. I'm Coulter Brown from the Northern Ag Network. Well, we've just about made it through the summer here. It's been one of the more difficult summers in recent memory, but August did offer a shot of optimism as a lot of producers saw upwards of an inch of rain. Now, it's not going to bust the drought, as you can tell from the drought monitor, but did offer some optimism that we can get through this year. We've about got the summer licked and we're starting to get feed put together to get through the winter here. Not going to be feeding what we normally do, but think we are going to survive these difficulties. Here in today's report, we're going to take a look at the cattle futures. We'll look at the cash fed cattle and box beef prices, then move into the cow market, followed by the video sales for both calves and yearlings. Talk a little about lamb prices, then we'll look at the cattle facts outlook for 2022 and finish up with a look at livestock mandatory reporting that expires here at the end of September. Well, before we get too much further, I want to thank our sponsor of this report, Ag Risk Advisors, for their continued support. Check them out at agriskadvisors.com and see how the tools that they offer separate them from the competition. Ag Risk Advisors offers a daily rate update on livestock risk protection. They have custom text alerts with policy updates and reminders. They've got daily interval reports that allow customers to track their unique policy and they can set up a coverage example if you're still considering it. Starting out with our look at our livestock markets, of course, we'll look at the cattle futures that have been trending higher. Now, the live cattle did hit some pressure at the end of August, but really they've been building momentum through the summer. Actually, we saw both live and feeder cattle score new contract highs after the cattle on feed report came out. That report said what we've been talking about for a while here, that fed cattle supplies are on the decline. Placements have been under 2020's levels for three months in a row now, and cattle supplies are coming down, which will put more leverage in the hands of cattle producers. Well, box beef has also added a lot of support to live cattle futures. Those prices were launching higher for the first three weeks of August, far above where most people thought they would go. Now, we did end up seeing the typical seasonal downturn that occurs in August once we got up to the Labor Day where packers have their beef buying made, but really beef demand is pretty strong here and no reason to think that it's going to fall apart as we move through the fall. The real incentive in this market is the deferred live cattle contracts. They are providing that carrot for cattle feeders to get animals bought, and they're giving them a reason to pay more money for these calves and yearlings. The cash cattle market was fairly flat through a lot of the summer, but turned up in August as we saw those live prices averaging $1.27 here recently and dress deals at $2.04. Those are some of the highest cash prices that we've seen in almost two years. The corn market has leveled out to some degree here, just hovering either side of the 550 mark, and that's taken a little bit of pressure off the feeder cattle. Certainly as we get through the 2021 harvest here, we'll get a better idea about what corn supplies will look like over the next year. And in those feeder futures, there's a lot of optimism priced in as contracts did hit their highs just a little over a week ago. We got above 170 for quite a few of the feeder contracts. Most of them weren't able to maintain that level, but still prices are trending higher and this market is sitting in a pretty good place as the fall calf run gets going. The cow market has been surprisingly strong through most of the summer, trending steady to higher, which was very surprising given the large number of cows that we've seen marketed just because ranchers did not have the grass to carry them through to the fall. Now, as we look at this market right now, it's starting to develop into two tiers as the bigger cows that have little flesh are selling in the high 60s to low 70s, but thinner wet cows selling from 50 to 60 cents. This has been another big month for video sales. Northern Livestock Video held their early fall preview and we saw a lot of light calves delivering early. More four weights in a sale than I can remember recently. Four to 450 pound steer calves sold from $2 to 217. Four 50 to 500 pounders, 192 to 205. The five to five and a half weight steers, 183 to 182. And heavier five weights, 175 to 183. A definite premium on those heavier calves, especially those that can deliver later in the fall or early winter. Now in Superior Livestock's Bighorn Classic that took place in Sheridan, we also saw strong prices, particularly on the yearling feeder cattle. Seven weight steers sold from 163 to 171, eight weights bringing 155 to 162, and nine weight feeder steers from 151 to 161. Some exceptionally large sheep sales taking place across the region. Now the supply has outweighed demand in some cases, so we've seen some prices drifting lower, but overall these sheep prices are blowing last year's out of the water. At the public auction yards in Billings, we saw the light 50 to 70 pound lamb sell from 285 up over $3, and 70 to 90 pounders 269 to 288. 
Used selling very firm, mostly from 75 to 85, but a good number getting up over the $1 mark. Well, during the National Cattlemen's Beef Association convention in Nashville, Cattle Facts presented their 2022 industry outlook. Now, on the weather side, it wasn't quite as positive as we were hoping for. Dr. Art Douglas said this drought could hang around through the fall and winter and may not break until spring, maybe even summer of 2022. Not what we wanted to hear, but after this last month, we're hoping he's wrong and hoping that the moisture situation is going to improve. On the market side of the cattle facts outlook though, very positive. Beef demand is as high as it's been in 30 years. Exports in 2021 are expected to be record high of 15% from last year and next year forecast to be another 5% higher. Corn prices are expected to have found a new range and they're thought to be trading from $4.25 to $6 here into the future. And with the decrease in hay production that we've seen, hay supplies are likely to stay tight and therefore prices elevated. The real story though in this cattle market is declining cattle supplies. Beef cow numbers are moving lower, that's due in part to the cyclical nature of the cattle business, but also exacerbated by the drought. Because we'll see less cows, beef production will fall, and lower supplies meeting strong demand should equate to higher prices, especially with more packing capacity coming online over the next 12 to 24 months. So that will create more competition for fed cattle. Now on to the price forecast. CattleFact says that here in 2021, five to five and a half weight steers will average $1.70. Next year though, they're say ranging from $1.70 to $2.30 with an average at $2. Eight weight feeders expected to see their average price jump 13% to $1.65 and fed cattle forecast range 120 to 150. Now those higher calf prices are going to create demand for bred cattle. We may not see it until 2022, but these cows are going to be worth something and cattle fact says, look out, those cow prices are going up. Now I want to wrap up today's report by talking about livestock mandatory reporting. That USDA program expires here at the end of September and it's the opportunity to implement some of the legislative changes we've heard thrown around over the last year and a half. We could see something like a mandate on negotiated cash cattle trade put in, a cattle contract library, increased reportings of grid and formula cattle sales, or even an investigator at USDA to look at competition within the packing segment. The best chance for any of those to be adopted is through the reauthorization of LMR. Now, DC insiders say significant changes are not likely to happen this year. They're expecting LMR to be reauthorized for another one year term, kick that can down the road, but it will give producers the chance to coalesce around some ideas to make long term changes to these cattle markets. Well, that's going to wrap up this month's report. Thanks so much for joining us. I know it's been a difficult summer, but there's light at the end of the tunnel that we're going to find higher prices and literally greener pastures. Until next time, I'm Coulter Brown from the Northern Ag Network. Have a good one.